My name is James Pryor. I'm a product manager with AMD's client business group on the desktop team. And I'm part of the core team that's bringing our new Zen-based processor, Summit Ridge, to market uh, very, very soon. Zen Architecture is our brand new grounds up design for x86. It's a CPU core designed to have a much, much higher IPC than anything you've seen from AMD before. 40% higher IPC than our current generation excavator cores. But in, in doing so, we're not going to blow out the power budget. We're maintaining our 25 by 20 initiative to increase performance without reducing, uh, without reducing um, power issues. So we're going to uh, deliver a much more efficient core at the same time as more performance. Absolutely, there's a number of new technologies inside of Zen. Uh, probably the most obvious is the fact that we've moved from a clustered multi-threading um, to a simultaneous multi-threading model. So we can now run two threads per CPU core. Um, it's it's a, an established pr uh, design parameter. You've seen it in, in SunSpark, in IBM, and other competitor CPUs. Uh, we've got a, a great new branch predictor on the front end, which is going to increase our ability to determine the different um, workloads that are being processed and how they're going to react to different events. And that's going to give a big difference as well as our new high performance, low latency cache and memory subsystem, which is another area we really wanted to focus on improving so that when we have uh, data and uh, memory translations going on, that you get much more performance from the CPU and that happens. Yeah, we're very excited about the branch predictor. We've got a hash perceptron neural net inside of there that's going to deliver some great intelligence into understanding the workload that's being loaded into the CPU, prefetching all those instructions, making sure that the, the tables are filled up so that we're not waiting on instruction decode, that those things are already done, and that we have repetitive code, especially in gaming, then you can have a very smooth and, and powerful experience because you've got a lot of performance right there because everything's already ready to go. For gamers, if you, classically branch prediction has been understood to solve the, the chess problem. The grandmaster, he sees all the moves on the board and then you go back and you understand it, whichever it is, so you don't have to think about what your next move is because you already kind of understood what they are. So a branch predictor is going to do the same thing inside of gaming too. It's going to learn that, hey, you know, we've got some great elements here in the map and we're going to understand that when it's time for to process that explosion, time to do something different where we suddenly switch to driving a vehicle, flying a vehicle, then it's going to smooth out that transition so you get better, more responsive gaming. They're very, very important. That's one of the reasons why we can't talk about them yet is we're waiting until the right moment to unveil those, those different bits of information. We will let you guys know before we go to market, but that day is not today, unfortunately. It gives us incredible efficiency, much more uh, utilization of transistors per millimeter. So with that increased density, we can use more transistors to provide more circuitry, which gives us the ability to increase IPC, offer more cache, more uh, coherency. There's a, there's a lot of benefits to having more transistors available in any given space. So we can you know, look at our current products, see how much space they're taking up, and then use that same amount of space or less and still end up delivering more. It was a very simple demo. We weren't trying to mislead anybody. It was simply that we wanted to show the performance of where we were in our bring up schedule, just kind of share the excitement of some of the results we're seeing. So it was core to core, clock to clock, thread to thread, identical clocks. So they were both set down at the same frequency. And then we just took this sample file we had made uh, that was just an example render of the CPU lid and rendered it and it takes you know about the same time on both processes we didn't recompile the demo that's uh, the standard uh, executable you can download publicly um, so there wasn't any real secrets inside of that one it was just a simple head to head this is where we are today we just wanted to share the excitement So 
So single thread, you can kind of infer from the multi-thread there. You can see how, you know, that's all flat clocks, flat uh, core configuration. You can kind of get a competitive understanding of where we are. We're not done yet. There's still more work to be done, more improvements to be found more uh, performance and power optimizations to be done. So single thread, I think you're gonna be pleased with the improvements that you see versus excavator. Like I said, we're going up 40% over excavator, which should end up, you know, maybe 60% over the pile driver cores you see in FX. So, you know, if you're familiar with the FX performance, you should be able to get yourself in the right ballpark, looking to where Zen's gonna land. That's certainly possible. We haven't fully uh, defined that state yet. So we're going to look at what it is to make sure we offer the best analysis of the workload using smart technologies inside of the CPU. As you know, we've got this eight core, 16 thread uh, permutation right now. And we understand that while that's great for a prosumer, uh, a gamer today may not need eight core, 16 threads to get the best performance out of his game. He might want a, a four core or an eight core. So we're gonna look at how do we make sure that these cores are optimally used by looking at the technology we've got inside the silicon, right? We're not gonna rely on the developer. We're gonna look at it ourselves and do some workload estimation, look at the smartness we've got in there and try and find a way to make sure we're offering the best uh, frequencies and core availability for each workload as it comes through. Best case, we will see increased performance with lower TDP than our current performance gaming chips. We're committed to the 25 by 20 initiative, which is where we're going to increase the performance of our processors uh, at the same time as increasing the efficiency. So this is not a, uh, you either get more performance or you save power. We're gonna do both in the same step with Zen. Um, too early to say on that one right now. We've still got a way to go on the motherboards and with the chips themselves to get that key learning going. We are engaged with the motherboard manufacturers to help them understand how this new technology and this new architecture works so they can give us the best capabilities they can. We're going to go into the specific details of which ones are overclockable and not at a later point, but I think you're going to like how we combine the history of today and you see how we're overclocking and how in the future we're going to enable it. Um, so I can't give you the specifics right now, but I, I think you'll be pleased. AM4 is uh, very exciting for us. It allows us to address uh, all our markets with a single socket, which is obviously very, very important for a lot of different people. Everybody likes to buy the PC at the right price point and feel they've got room to grow. So we're committed to this socket for a number of years. We're going to keep AM4 around for a long time and we'll introduce it first as an addition to our current product line higher up than we are today. So we're going to enter in new markets and you'll see us with some great new performance and great new features and capabilities when we do that in the desktop channel. AM4 is already available for our OEM partners like Dell, HP, Lenovo, and they're already starting to ship uh, systems for commercial and for families using Bristol Ridge APUs. And those guys are being quite popular and seeing some great success there. And those, hopefully all those systems will only require a simple BIOS update to be drop-in upgrade compatible with Summit Ridge when it launches. Oh, well, there's a couple of problems there with you've got uh, economy of scale. As the volume uh, grows, then you'll see the price become uh, a little bit better. Uh, the, the initial part of it, this reason why we introduced AM4 with OEMs first, is those are the guys that have got the best cost advantage for DDR4 because they buy so much of it. Right? If we go straight to the consumer with Bristol Ridge, they'd be looking at higher prices for memory for uh, performance levels than maybe they'd seen with our previous gen platform in DDR3. So we didn't want to do that. So we let the, the people who have the, the marketing and the uh, purchasing leverage use that to their advantage. So what you'll see is when these are available in the channel, then that price question won't be a problem because the, the market will have leveled. Yeah, so for the Zen based, yeah, Zen based is definitely possible. It's on our roadmap for late next year. So you'll see it in, uh, you know, some exciting new designs. We can't share any details on those just yet, but look for them to start appearing in the second half of 2017. Um, regarding uh, Polaris, 
Um, I know that there are some some products coming on down the line, but I, I can't really speak to what they'll appear and how they'll appear in the market. But Polaris, Vega, all those good, all that goodness inside of the graphics IP is going to be pushed into our APUs. Well, it, it depends on where you are right now. We're seeing, um, with the transition from DirectX 11 to DirectX 12, a lot of games are getting a lot more performance on FX than we've ever seen before, right? There's a lot of games out there that you can see double the performance just by changing the API. And that should tell you that, you know, hey, maybe I wasn't limited by my CPU as much as I thought. It was the way the game was written and the API that was underneath it that was holding me back. So, depends on the game. Depends on what the target level of performance is. If you're looking for 1080p, high quality settings and modern games, then FX is gonna get the job done for you. As you move into higher resolutions and more online demanding situations and perhaps adding in broadcasting, then you're gonna to wanna to say, you know what, I wanna want the next best thing coming along, which is gonna be the great new Zen CPU. Oh, it's good to hear that. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, pleasure.